The Tiramis SMP, the highly anticipated roleplay-oriented survival multiplayer Minecraft server, currently in mid-production by rising YouTuber Asher was here. The Tiramis SMP will be taking inspiration from a number of places, though most notably the Dream SMP and its structure, though it will have a much more solid storyline and plot written by Asher himself. The server will have a high fantasy theme to it and will also include a number of unique custom-coded weapons to make each character stand out and to be more unique. Each player on this server will be more of an actor than strictly a player in a game, and obviously this server will be whitelisted with only 10 to 13 players being present on the initial day one, with new players and characters being introduced as the story unfolds and adapts to each player carving their story for their respective character. Asher has expressed that he wants the story to be the main focus on this server, and given that he's a novelist and a writing student, this is to be expected. The plot of the SMP and the name of Tiramis itself are derived from his novel of the same name, and we know that one of the most prominent characters who will likely be female and have a story tied to undeath, necromancy, and moral grayscale. We also know that Asher will be playing something of a supporting character who is centered on the concept of tragedy. His character's backstory includes the killing of a close friend with his iconic sword leading to inner turmoil, and it's also strongly hinted that he plays a key role in the necromancy that deals with the aforementioned character. These are the only two characters we have gotten any real information about. Though Bucky Ducky, who is a confirmed member, has claimed that he intends to live the life of a simple duck farmer on the server. We know the setting of the series is going to be in the province of Tiramis, a high fantasy setting that in his novels includes all manner of mythological creatures and races such as elves and beastmen. It is unknown if race will play an important role in the story, though it is likely that will depend on the cast of characters. Perhaps one or more characters may choose to play members of some obscure or questionable race, and then have to deal with their own plot lines because of it? It's hard to say, but a tantalizing thought to chew on for those of the creative-minded lot. Along with this province, there will be three warring kingdoms that players will hail from and have to deal with conflicts surrounding them. The first is the Kingdom of Nightgrove, a city focused primarily on the arcane and fight out of a feeling of desperation for survival of their ways of life. The second kingdom is Arcton, a city focused on money, trade, and democratic leadership. The third kingdom is Galeron, a monarchy focused on military might and combat prowess. As of now, Asher has unveiled two complete artifacts, two in development, as well as two additional concepts that he has loosely confirmed that he's at least toying with. The first artifact that has been revealed by Asher is his personal artifact, Ethereum, the Blade of the Eclipse. A sword that can split into two separate swords and grant speed to and a special leap attack to the wielder. The second artifact that has been revealed is the Saber of Night. This sword summons a shadow clone of the wielder that will fight for 15 seconds and can turn the wielder invisible until attacked or you attack. Gain some strong D&D invisibility spell vibes with this one. As for the in-development artifacts, we know of Jalentia, a staff of the Ice Queen. A staff that can freeze all nearby enemies... And there's also an unnamed axe with a powerful bash attack, as well as a very impressive 3D model. For the unconfirmed artifacts that Asher has mentioned, we have two that have been guessed, so to say, in his Discord. The first is a Reaper Scythe that will potentially have some sort of life-stealing premise, and could potentially inflict the Wither effect, nausea, slowness, or weakness, or a combination of all those on those it attacks. And the second unconfirmed artifact is a powerful pickaxe. This weapon will function as a normal pick with a cooldown that will provide a haste buff, as well as an increased attack and damage buff for combat. Now the question on everyone's mind right now is how do I get into this incredible server? Well there are a few criteria one has to make before they apply when applications open in late March. 1. You must be an active content creator. This means you make content for a hobby or career or just for fun not simply because you want to join this server. Asher wants people dedicated to the craft of content creation. 2. You're around Asher's age, that being 21. Asher is looking for creators around his age as he wants to be comfortable around them. That means if you're under the age of 16, sadly you are extremely unlikely to get in. And 3. You make content that is good in Asher's eyes. It certainly won't hurt to have well-edited videos and good quality equipment 
Once applications are open, we know we'll be doing an in-person interview with Asher, going into details and voice chat in Discord about character concepts and plot-related events. That is everything we know so far about the Tiramis SMP. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe so you can keep up on any future Tiramis SMP content as I do intend to cover more of it as we get closer and closer to that final grand release day and applications in March. That being said, thank you all for watching again, and always remember, no one loves you.